Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, we will be doing a full comparison between the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro versus the Watch 4 Classic. We will look at every aspect of these smart watches, and the video will maintain the following format. First, we will see what hasn't changed and is exactly or almost the same. Then, we will look at what has changed, what is new and noteworthy. And finally, we will then move on to a conclusion to see if there's a need to upgrade, which one is better, or would it matter if you choose one over the other? So let's dive in and get started right away. So let's quickly talk about what is exactly and approximately the same with both of these watches. So first and foremost, the most important thing is that both of these watches use the exact same processor, which is the Exynos W920 processor. That's a five nanometer processor and it's a dual core processor. Both phones have 1.5 gigabytes of RAM and also 16 gigabytes of memory. So when it comes to performance, it's gonna be exactly the same on both of these smartphones. Now, another thing that is similar is the waterproof rating. These are both IP68 grade water resistant. And of course, the only way to charge these phones is via wireless charging. So just using a standard uh, charger, you can charge any one of these uh, devices. So any accessories for this phone are going to transfer over to this phone uh, as far as charging is concerned. Another thing that is very, very similar is going to be the overall software experience. There is a little bit difference. Let me show you what that is. Uh, if I go into the settings of both of these phones, you can see they look the same overall. Okay, if I swipe over, it's all the same stuff here as far as uh, user experience is concerned. But if I go to my settings, and if I go into About Watch, and if I go over to Software, you can see this is One UI 4.0, and as of now, the Watch 5 Pro is in fact, let's see, software info, One UI 4.5. So that's one difference, but it's a minor difference because like I said, uh, if you look at these things, everything is the same the way they work. If I go up here, you've got the apps, okay? If I go to this side, you have the notifications, if I go to this side, you have the tiles. Nothing looks different around here, okay? Maybe some very minor changes, but nothing major. So let me press. You also have the home button here. You got the home button here, and both of them have the back button that's exactly the same. And like I said, we have the quick toggles on the top that are customizable. It's all the same. Looks and feels and also operates at the same performance level because we also have the same processor and the same RAM. Now, as far as built-in sensors are concerned, they all have the same exact sensors. You have got the ambient light sensor, the barometer, the compass, and all that good stuff is the same. Also, when it comes to the heart rate monitor, the ECG reader, the blood pressure monitor, and the oxygen monitor, it's all the same, okay? They can both do exactly the same thing as far as looking for those values in your body. Now the display size on both of these phones and the display resolution is also the same. So with the larger models, which I have right here, 1.36 inch display on both, 330 PPI and 450 by 450 resolution. All the same quality and brightness of the display also the same. Now one thing that's slightly different but almost the same is the weight. Now it's funny because if you look at this watch from the sideways, it actually is thinner than this watch. So if I look at this from the sideways, you can see it's going to be thicker and bigger and there's reasons for that. The overall dimensions are pretty much identical with slight variations and when it comes to weight, this one is actually lighter at 46.5 grams and this one here is 52 grams. So this is gonna be, be a little bit lighter, not a huge deal. You're not gonna feel that. When it comes to the straps, uh, you can use the straps on a Galaxy Watch 4 right on the straps of the Watch 5. Uh, they are the same exact size. So if you have a bunch of straps that you purchased for this watch, you can also use them on this guy if you end up upgrading. 
And one thing I'm going to show you guys real quick is if you look at the backs of these devices, one thing I like with the Watch 5 uh, Pro is the back over here is matte as opposed to the shiny finish, which is not a big deal because you don't get to see the back that often, but it's just something I always like to mention. Uh, I'm always on the side of matte finishes as opposed to the glossy finish. And even on the front, we have a little bit more matte here than the gloss, even though this one is also brushed aluminum over here, it does have some shine on this rotating bezel on the front. Here we have more matte color. When it comes to the microphones, the speakers, and the vibration motor is concerned, it's all the same, okay? So you're gonna get the same speaker quality, same microphone quality. Now let's move on and talk about the actual differences on both of these smartphones. One of the biggest difference actually comes with the build quality. The Watch 5 Pro gets an update as far as the build quality is concerned. Now this one actually now is built out of titanium as far as the uh, material is concerned. And also the display is in fact sapphire crystal. On the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, what we have is we have stainless steel construction. This is stainless steel that is titanium. So that's gonna be better, more durable. And also the display on this one is the Gorilla Glass DX Plus. So the new Sapphire display is actually gonna be slightly more durable and tougher than the older Watch 4 Pro, uh, just so you guys know. Now another major change is the actual battery life. So basically what has happened is on this guy, we have good battery life. This one has 361 milliamp hours battery, but we have a big increase here. This goes to 590 milliamp hours of battery. So that's almost a 40% increase in battery life. And that might be important for some people based on your usage. Have you ever noticed that your watch 4 was lacking in battery? then this might be an option to consider if this is something that you use heavily. But the most major difference between these two guys is the fact that you lose the rotating bezel that you have here. So with this one, it's completely touchscreen. You have the back button and the home button. This is also completely touchscreen. You got the back button and the home button, but then you have this rotating bezel that doesn't add any functionality, but just allows you to scroll back and forth a little bit easier. Some people just like how cool that is. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I swipe over here, I can continue swiping through the phone and I can do the same over here, okay? I can just use the touch screen. The bezel, the rotating bezel is not necessary, but if I want to, I can rotate and move between these various options, okay? So if I go back home, and if I were to go up to my apps, again, I can use the rotating bezel to go up and down, or I can swipe up and down. With this one, you only have the one option where it can touch the screen. So if I go up, there's no rotation here, so I have to simply use the touch screen to go back up and down. And as I'm touching these phones, I'll let you know the overall uh, user experience is the same because like I said, we have the same exact processor. Now I mentioned that both of these phones have wireless charging. Again, you use this charger right here and you just attach it to the back of the device like this. So if it's right here, boom, it attaches and it starts to charge. Same on both, same standard. Uh, but the big difference now is the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro actually supports fast charging if you use a fast charging brick. The brick simply has to be a 25 watt charger that's gonna get you the maximum speed when it comes to charging. Some people might actually appreciate that because quickly you can get a lot of charge on this phone. This one just charges at the regular speed. Now, overall connectivity features on both of these smartphones are very similar, but I'll let you know, this one does have the newer Bluetooth standard 5.2. So you expect, you can expect better connectivity with your smartphone. This has the older Bluetooth 5.0, which is nearly 100% perfect, but 5.2 is gonna be even better as far as retaining the connection goes with your smartphone and the speed of the transfer. So that's just something to keep in mind. Better Bluetooth connection. Uh, when it comes to Wi-Fi, it's all the same. The GPS is the same. 
If you have the LTE versions, it's the same chip, but Bluetooth has seen an upgrade. So we have compared everything of note, and as you can see, as far as improvements are concerned, there are not too many, but they are there. It's the battery life, better build quality, and faster charging option, but everything else remains the same, such as display size and quality, software experience, performance, water resistance, and all that stuff. So should you upgrade from the 4 to the 5? Absolutely not, unless you get a great deal, which Samsung is known to provide. If there's a great deal, you can go for it, but do not upgrade at full pricing. And if you like your rotating bezel on the Watch 4 Classic, that will be gone on the Watch 5 Pro. However, if you're in the market to buy a smartwatch, again, you can go for the better deal because both watches are pretty much identical with the exception of the battery size, build quality, and fast charging. I would say get the one that appeals to you if you're trying to choose between the two, but no need to upgrade from four to five. And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day.